Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm going to try and explain, using a story format, about the principle of IgG4. Now, just so that you're aware, IgG represents antibodies, okay? Your body normally produces antibodies to fight off viruses and bacteria and fungi, and so, in the context of an infection, it normally produces IgM first, which is a very big antibody. But after about two weeks, it will start to produce IgG antibodies. And these are smaller antibodies that will then target the infection to get rid of it. Within IgG, this is the long-lived antibody. So this is the antibody that you tend to get after you've had an infection or even a vaccination, the second time that you're exposed to the virus or the bacteria, your body will then make IgG antibodies. So this is put into four groups, or four classes, IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, and IgG4. Just for the purposes of this story, you just need to remember that IgG1 and IgG3 are primarily the antibodies that deal with causing inflammation. IgG4, on the other hand, is the antibody about tolerance. So this is what a beekeeper would have because he's being stung all the time by bees. Rather than the body fighting the venom, it essentially tells the immune system, don't worry about it, it's not a problem. That's IgG4. It's important to realize that in the context of COVID vaccines, this was unexpected. So when we saw IgG4, especially around mRNA vaccines, that should have been a trigger to try and make us explain what could be the mechanisms. That's a whole different conversation. But for the purposes of the story, just remember that IgG4 is the tolerant antibody. And essentially, this story is going to be about explaining how this can work in the context of the science. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a village that was surrounded by many different kinds of dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs were very big, they were very aggressive, and they used to eat people. So the village had built high walls to try and protect themselves. But they also had dinosaurs that were much more placid, and who seemed as though they wouldn't cause any harm. So, a group of scientists in the village thought, what happens if we combine the DNA of a troublesome dinosaur with that of a dinosaur who is docile? Would we then be able to manage the threat that occurs? So very quickly, they went in the lab. They put the two DNAs together and lo and behold, they produced an intermediate dinosaur. They've not seen it before. There's never been one created. As this dinosaur grew and started to produce more little dinosaurs, they thought that this is going to be the solution to our dinosaur problem. Guess what happened? The dinosaur that was produced was very docile. Instead, of it attacking the very aggressive dinosaurs like a T-Rex. This dinosaur instead tried to make friends. It knocked down the gate so that the dinosaur could get in. It would try and play with this dinosaur that could eat people. This was not expected. So the villagers asked, what do we do? This dinosaur you've created is now making friends with the dinosaur we're afraid of. But the village leaders were very worried and they didn't want to get into trouble. So they convinced the villagers, listen, this is great news. In effect, what we have 
is a dinosaur that's going to protect us by distracting the worrisome dinosaur. Well, the question is, what happens when the dinosaur gets hungry? Will it continue to play with these docile dinosaurs? Or will it then start to eat the villagers as its instinct has always been? Only time will tell, but please recognize this is not a circumstance that anyone could, should, or have wanted to create. Thank you.